I'm Cricket Fox. This is Cricket's Coffee. Let's get started. Good afternoon. Welcome back. It's Cricket here. Uh, I just want to apologize. I've had to be away on some personal business for a few days, so we're a little bit behind on getting a couple of podcasts out. So today we're back to Bridgeport Wives. This is Chapter 3. Uh, Maddie's um, arrived to have a late night snack in Albuquerque, and I'll leave it from there. Even I didn't see it coming. I managed to get back to the car as the exquisite sunset took place. It was a truly amazing experience in itself to watch. I can't even begin to put into words how to describe the colors of the Southwest are amazing in itself, but tonight with this sunset, it was truly unique. The fire ed, Mixed with the yellow and orange with the wispy clouds was stunning. As I watched the sun disappear, taking in what was left of the stunning colors, I never noticed the tears rolling down my cheek, it was what Glenn had said to me in a letter a few years back. Glenn was my English professor, it was an elective class but it was the best time I had my whole time at university. Everyone wanted to take his class, I got lucky enough to be in his final class. He helped me with my thesis paper and was great for bouncing ideas off during study groups. It was our final day of class that he shared with us that the was ill and had no clue how much had left. Once the sun has gone down for the day, take care of you. You can't fix anything that has happened during the day because it's all over. It was his philosophy, so simple but it took a while to get the meaning of it. I have no clue what made me think about that but they were words I had forgotten about. Needless to say, it was time I adopted them again. We were all gutted when Glenn died but he had suffered enough. He left his footprint on all our lives, even today I still take him with me. I can't change or fix, those choices I made in the past, it's all about the next series of choices that I make that could affect everything. I left San Francisco to try to build a new life but will those choices of just surviving could come back to haunt me. Heading for a new life in Chicago, can I finally let go of everything? I found a towel and dried the sweat off, it had been a great hike, and I felt refreshed. I needed the chance to blow out the cobwebs and try and let go of a lot of things that had haunted me for far too long. Opening, the car, I sat down and just took a couple of deep breaths, I reached behind the driver's seat and got my sneakers. I had to dig into the suitcase for a fresh pair of socks, get a fresh bottle of water out of the trunk. I was not paying attention as I put my hand into the cooler, it was freezing and my hand was numb when I pulled it out. It was my last chance for a while to completely repack the car. My t-shirt was soaked with sweat, which is a funny way felt good. I can't remember the last time I felt like this. It was a good accomplishment, feeling productive. I had not put myself first in a very long time. It was something I had to learn to do again. Sitting in the passenger seat with the door open, packing the camera back in the bag, I got to thinking about Glenn and how much I missed him. I still have the letter he wrote to me somewhere in the back of the car in one of the few boxes I brought with me. Glenn was truly wise, his simple look on life helped so many people. To this day I still talk to him especially when the sky is a little bluer or the grass a little greener. You know, those brighter colors that make you pay attention and it was time to start paying attention to what was in front of me, what was I missing and forget what I was hanging on to that I could see in the rearview mirror. The rearview mirror was holding a lot that I needed to let go of. The question was this. I know I need to let go but how much of what was there would follow me? That was the one thing only time would tell. I realized it was almost dark and I wanted to get back on the highway to Albuquerque before it was dark and I could not see anything. In a new place not knowing the roads, I wanted to get back on the road safely. I would need to stop and gallop for a gas fill up or I would not make it to Albuquerque. The drive to park was hidden and I wanted to be able to see my way back to the main road. Time for the driving headband and some tunes to rock out to on the drive. With it getting dark I wanted to get back on the road, and to Albuquerque, that hike made me famished, just didn't know how much. I was glad I had made the call to the hotel and had reserved a room, but I was starving and needed to find a good place for a meal. One of my Facebook girlfriends recommended Sadie's Albuquerque and it sounded good by the research that I did. I found their address and popped it in the GPS, and I was on my way. With driving tunes and the window open it was a nice night. Getting closer to the city, I turned down the tune so I could hear that friendly male voice tells me which way to go. Sadie's was a beautiful building and you could smell the food outside of the parking lot. The parking lot was pretty empty and I was able to get a spot close to the door, hoping I was not too late, and I managed to get in the door just as they were locking it for the night. You will have to sit in the bar as the dining room is closed. The assistant manager told me and that was fine. 
I needed the noise of the television to fill my head and take over my thoughts. Things had gotten too heavy on that track and I needed some fun. Scott was the bartender on for the evening and was so nice and made me smile. My friends call me Maddie. I told him as he was getting my food order. The Sadie's nachos looked amazing but no jalapeno, guacamole and refried beans, please. I told Scott who in return asked me. Are you planning to kiss anyone tonight? I must have had a funny look on my face, I didn't get it at first. Onions. He wanted to know if I wanted onions. A bit embarrassed, I felt my cheeks get warm. He made me a famous margarita and also brought me a glass of water with it. I don't mean to leave you alone but I need to do some things to close up, but let me know if you need anything else. Thanks. I replied and asked. Can I watch anything sports-wise from Chicago if it is on? It was a replay of the Black Hawks game from earlier in the day and that was fine by me. Moving to a new city I needed to learn all I could about the teams. I could not take my eyes off of Scott, there was just something about him that got me wondering what it would be like to be with him. What in the hell did he look like with his shirt off? I wanted to look into his eyes without his glasses into his soul and see what was there. Wait a freaking minute, what the hell was I thinking? After everything I had been through and I had done everything to shut everyone out, not letting anyone near my heart and soul and I was thinking this. What was wrong with me? I didn't even know this man but for some reason, I wanted more. My head says to run like hell but my heart is waking up and telling me to stay and see what happens. I hope you guys will look up uh, Sadie's and uh, on the menu especially. Uh, those nachos look really good on the uh, website. Uh, it's going to start getting a little interesting. This is where I really stepped out of my comfort zone the next few chapters had some fun tried to find a little bit of humor i still had no clue what i was doing but this actually turned out better than i expected thanks for listening and on friday i will drop the character list um i think the chapters are getting a little bit longer so it'll be a short podcast friday drop the character list so you can get to know who everybody is again thank you guys so much for finding me listening to me sharing me out i really appreciate it take care you guys have one job and that's to live an extraordinary life thanks for taking the time to listen today i really appreciate it you guys know the drill i'm cricket this is cricket's coffee i'm gonna go drink or i'll see you soon <laughs>